Welcome back, my friends on YouTube. I'm Gene Della Sala, president of Audioholics. And I'm Hugo Rivera, vice president of marketing. Gene, another wonderful day over here for our nice Audioholic fans. Absolutely, my friend. I'm looking forward to these videos. I'll tell you what, we, we actually you spent a great deal of time. We looked at all the questions that we got, and we came out with some topics over here for our peeps. So I say right now, we start with how to connect a multi-sub. You know, it's incredible. I can't believe how many emails I've gotten about this in the last month or so. Mm -hmm. And it's because we've been doing so many videos on the benefits of multi-sub, and then we did the one on mini DSP, mm -hmm. that I, it was bound to happen where we we're gonna get flooded with these kind of questions. Totally. And I've always assumed people knew how to connect um, Multiple, sub, multiple subs. Don't assume anything. Correct. You know what they say, it makes an ass out of you and me. Yes. <laughs> so with that said, yes, we should discuss this. And I would tell you the first step in connecting the multi-subwoofer system is to identify what kind of connections you have on the back of your AV receiver. We're assuming you're using an AV receiver with a subwoofer output, Hugo. Very important, yes. Because people will ask, you know, what if there's no uh, output? Okay, well, I guess we should cover that too. Yeah. You're opening up a Pandora's box here. This <laughs> Sorry. A 20 minute video. Kind of my specialty. But... Okay, so let's first assume you don't have a subwoofer output. You're using a two channel amp, an integrated amp, or an old 1970s vintage receiver. Mm -hmm. There's two ways you could hook up a subwoofer then, a powered subwoofer. One is you could do it speaker level, but you have to have a subwoofer that takes speaker level inputs. Mm -hmm. And speaker level means cables, speaker cables, okay? Right. So you would typically hook that up in parallel with your main speakers. You wanna make sure if you have a receiver that has speaker A and speaker B, that it's parallel connections. Super important. Because if you don't and you connect them in series, you'll actually lose sound quality of your receiver because now the impedances interact with each other. Mm -hmm. So you wanna make sure it's a parallel connection. You can test that by pressing the speaker B on your, on your amplifier with nothing connected to it. If you stop hearing sound out of speaker A, then you know it's a series connection. Exactly. If you press speaker B and you still hear the sound, it's parallel. You could use speaker B to connect your left and right speaker level outputs to your left and right speaker level inputs of your subwoofer, assuming your, spe your subwoofer has speaker level inputs. That's a wonderful tip, Gene, because a lot of people, you know, especially when they start, they connect them in series, you know? So yeah. it just kills the sound right there. It, you it know? will. It would definitely impact the sound. The, mm -hmm. the other way of doing it is if you're, um, a lot of the older receivers have preamp outputs. Mm -hmm and you could use the left and right preamp outputs and plug it into the left and right preamp inputs of your subwoofer. Now, if your subwoofer only has one input, do not, and I, let me repeat yes. this, mm -hmm. do not use a male to female splitter from the left and rights of your receiver. The reason why you don't wanna do this is if you take the preamp outputs of your left and right channels and put it into a splitter like this, there's no buffers. Mm -hmm. So you're basically killing all of the isolation from the left and right channels because you're mixing those channels without having input buffers. Exactly. Whereas if you do it on the subwoofer side, if you have left and right inputs of your subwoofer side and you take one cable and plug it into the left and right inputs of your subwoofer side, your subwoofer has left and right inputs that are they're basically input buffers that go to a summing network. Mm -hmm. So you'll typically get 6 dB more uh, input gain by doing that. It's not making your subwoofer louder. Right. It's just making it more sensitive now because you're taking that signal and now adding 6 dB. In most cases, some of the subwoofers actually adjust for that and don't give you that 6 dB boost. It really depends on, on, on the circuitry that's in the subwoofer. Got it. But a quick way to do it, I mean, in most cases, bass below 80 hertz is mono. So you could still just use one, either the left or the right output of your receiver and plug it into one input of your subwoofer and then you'll have your bass. You just have to now use the bass management in your subwoofer because these old receivers don't have a low pass filter. They don't have bass management. Understood. Okay. So what's the next step, Gene? Okay, so let's go back to an AVR. Mm -hmm. Step one in an AVR is look at the back panel of your AVR. How many subwoofer outputs does it have? Does it have one? Does it have two? If it has one and you want to hook up two subwoofers, you use a male to female splitter. Got it. Okay, you plug it into the subwoofer output of your receiver. Mm -hmm. Then you've got two female ends. You get two male connectors, RCA level connectors. You plug one of them to one subwoofer. You plug another one to another subwoofer. If you don't want to do that and you have the ability to daisy chain subwoofers, you could still take that one subwoofer output cable, plug it into the first subwoofer. If that first subwoofer has an LFE output or a subwoofer output, 
you can plug that into your next subwoofer. Now the cool thing about that is some of these subwoofers like the JL Phantoms, mm -hmm. they have the arc room correction. If you daisy chain those subwoofers together and you run the auto EQ of the master sub, it'll actually do a correction curve for both subs simultaneously. Okay. So that way it'll blend it much better. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, I do recommend daisy chaining. Understood. Okay. So for the newbies out there, daisy chaining obviously is not the same thing as connecting in series. No, because you're you're not you're not. Uh, it's not like you're doing it speaker right. level where you're dividing up the power. You're just taking that line level signal and you're going from one product to the next product. Okay. So the gain should be fine on that. And I do like the daisy chain method if you're using a, a subwoofer's auto room correction or if you're using a parametric EQ. Like our Validine DD15 plus subwoofers have a I think a 10 band PEQ. Mm -hmm. So in if I wanted to use that graphic equal or the parametric equalizer, I would daisy chain the subs and just use one EQ to correct both subs at the same time, and that's really a good method to do. Okay. It makes it a lot easier. I mean, you could EQ each sub separately and use superposition to get them to blend, but it takes kind of a propeller head to do that. Yeah, it takes some time. It does take time. Mm -hmm. Now, let me discuss a little bit more about the multiple subwoofer outputs, mm -hmm. because some AVRs and processors have multi-sub outputs. They actually have two or more outputs. Mm -hmm. Like my Denon AVP has three subwoofer outputs. Incredible. Actually has six. It has Holy balanced cow. and unbalanced. Okay. But a lot of the lower end receivers, I'm talking about, you know, under a thousand dollars, when mm -hmm. they give you two subwoofer outputs, they're nothing more than just a parallel connection. Okay. So Understood. in a parallel connection, you're not getting independent to level, you're not getting independent delay, and you're not getting independent EQ. Okay. So in those cases you're basically doing this yeah. internally in the receiver. Mm -hmm. It's convenient. Mm -hmm. But the preferred um, method is to have a receiver that has independent subwoofer outputs. That way you could do your level matching, you could do your delay, independent delay settings, and then if you want to do independent EQ, if it's sophisticated enough, you can do that too. Understood. So you okay. really need to go into your receiver's base management settings and see if there are independent subwoofer outputs or if they're just parallel. Okay. What else, Gene? Because, I mean, we have another step over here that we need to cover. Next step would be if you have four subwoofer Four, four yeah. subwoofers to connect. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, so if you have to connect three or four subwoofers and you still only have one or two subwoofer outputs, you're going to have to do a combination of Y splitters or daisy chaining or both. Mm -hmm. Okay, you just got to be kind of smart about it and um, you should be good to go. It shouldn't be that difficult. Subwoofer output connections are very high impedance uh, connections. You can plug three or four subwoofers into one subwoofer output of a receiver and you're not going to overdrive the sub the uh, preamp outputs of the subwoofer channel. Mm -hmm. So you should be good. And you know, for advanced users, I would really tell you if you if you have a measurement device, if you have uh, you know a room EQ kind of system, mm -hmm. and you have a microphone, get a mini DSP product. Total and awesome investment, and we talk about that in another video extensively, and in the description below, I'm linking that video, so you go ahead and uh, take a look at it. It's really, really valuable, and uh, honestly, that's the only way that you were able to get the mother-in-law seat out of here, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, I, I love that product because you could take a, a cheap AV receiver that most receivers don't give you any type of EQ adjustments on the mm -hmm. subwoofer channel. I'm sorry, but these guys missed the boat. The most important thing to correct is the bass, and they just it goes over their head. Yep. They'll give you an auto setup, they'll give you bouncy house speaker mm -hmm. features, but they won't give you a multiple adjustable PEQ for the subwoofer output. Correct. So in that case, for like 130 bucks, guys, or less, if you get the unbalanced version, you can get one of the mini DSP products, plug the subwoofer output of the receiver into the input of the mini DSP, and get two and up to four outputs, and they're independent level, independent EQ, independent delay, and you could, you could gang them all up so you could do EQ to all of them at the same time. It's just, it's ridiculous that a feature like this is not built into most of these products, these receivers these days. Totally. But you know, that's the uh, inexpensive solution. It will just go ahead and take a little bit of work from your part, but it's totally worth it. You know, if you have the technical capacity to do this and the patience, um, it's definitely gonna go ahead and pay off. Absolutely. So honestly, with that said, is there anything else you would like to add? No, I think we're good. Um, just guys, 
do it, man. If you're, if you're contemplating multi-sub, don't contemplate it anymore. It's never been a better time to connect more than one subwoofer. We've been, talk about, <laughs> we've been talking about the benefits of multi-subbing for a long time. I'll go ahead and link some more videos also in the description down here. Great stuff. If you have the ability, definitely try it out. Okay, so with that said, you know, if I hope uh, that you like this video and uh, if so, click like uh, below, share it with your friends and comment below. Let us know what you think. Let us know what other kind of topics uh, you want to go ahead and uh, see us cover. And with that said, until next time, keep, keep listening. listening.